Hey guys, um, so today's big idea is work smarter, not harder. You know, growing up, I always heard it, heard people talking about, you know, you gotta just work hard, just keep doing it, don't keep looking for easier ways to do things, you just gotta get to work. And that, that, those things are, those lessons were absolutely valuable. The idea of working hard, working for, for what you have, that, 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 those are valuable lessons, but there's a very important lesson that I think shouldn't be excluded from that lesson, and that's this, work smarter, not harder. Okay, so basically, the idea is this. You should be working hard, yes. You know, do things to the best of your ability. Do a great job in everything you do, great. But make it where the work that you do is profitable because you did it smart. You did it wisely, okay? So an example of this is when you're biking, okay? When you're biking, you, 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 change, you change gears. They have these little gears on them, okay? Right here. Right here. They have these gears. The smaller gear that you go get, makes more tension. The, the bigger gear that you go gives less tension, where you, you know can, um, w which is really valuable when you're going uphill, <laughs> for instance. Uh, and so when you're biking, you don't just stick it in one gear and kind of just, this is my favorite gear. But you change the gears, and the reason why you don't do that is because so you don't redline. What that means is basically think of your energy as a gauge. Okay, there's the green. You know, this is really easy. Medium. This is this is pretty hard. This is maybe like a yellow. This is this is pretty hard. But you know what? I I I I can power through. Now, obviously, well, that's a discussion for another day. And then there's redlining. This is this is like if you were in a car and you put it in too low of a gear and you're going too fast. <laughs> It's where you're using up more energy than you can. Okay, so a good example of this would be if you're standing up while you're pedaling and you're pedaling really, really, really fast, well, you get tired really, really fast. See, it, it, it's redlining. You, you're using up all your energy, all your strength, all your reserves. You're getting where you can't, uh, where you can't carry on. Uh, when you're going uphill, you don't keep it in the same gear because check it out. Something's gonna, something's gonna not, not hold out. Either your heart, <laughs> or your legs. The ideal is to make it where you're, where you're splitting up your work between your legs and your heart. Um, if you put it where you're in too low of a gear all the time, or too high, too skinny of a gear. I don't know how they say that. Um, you're working really, really hard, and it uses up all your leg strength. It makes your legs really, really sore, and your heart isn't really getting, doing anything. It's mostly your legs, or you can go to the other extreme and make it where you're pedaling really, really fast, and there's like no resistance, and you and your heart's going like crazy, but your legs really aren't getting any kind of a workout, and it's hard to even keep pedaling up at that at that level of rotations. Um, if you've ever been on a bike where the gear was all messed up, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So you know you you kind of have to have to do it where where you're not redlining, where your legs aren't being used too much, and your heart's not being used too much. Um, and and you, and you have to change your gears, you know, to where you're, you're you're getting the the best the best performance you can. It doesn't say that, for instance, you're not going to bike 50 or 100 miles or something. We're not even talking about how how much work you're doing. We're just simply talking about the the idea of doing it smarter. Let's say you're going 100 miles. 100 miles on a bike. That's that's a lot. You got to really conserve your energy. You got to space yourself. You got to uh, pace. You got to pace yourself. Um, and if you if you don't use your gears right, it's going to be really hard and take you a really long time to get to 100 miles. Now, you can probably make 100 miles without ever shifting your gear, but that's going to be pretty hard. That's going to be pretty hard. And so that's what we're talking about, the idea of working harder. I mean, sorry, working smarter, not harder. The idea, the, the, the truth is that you only have so much energy. Sometimes we think that we're invincible, that we can rise above everything. We start to have little victories and we're like, yes, I can power through it all. But... You only have so much energy, and eventually you will kaboot out. You will, you will bonk, evidently. Um, so sometimes we try to overcome, but we do it in unwise ways. Like, for instance, let's, let me give you a couple examples. Um, you're trying to get off drugs, but you're not getting a job. You're not doing anything. You're not learning to be disciplined and to live a disciplined lifestyle, getting up at a set time every day, taking showers every day. You're not doing, you're still doing the same thing over and over again that you used to do before you quit drugs. And then you're not learning any life skills. You're not relearning how to live. Um, you're not learning how to avoid, you know, drugs, how to, how to get away from that. You're not asking anybody any help. Um, and, and you're not filling your time with other things. So you just have these blank, Blank segments of your day, or 
time that you're still using in the exact same way, going through the same ruts, um, you're not changing any of your habits, but you're going to somehow overcome drugs just by deciding one day I'm going to stop. Well, that's not and that's that that's cute and all, but it's extremely naive. You, if you're if you just oh I, I'm gonna do I'm gonna stop doing drugs. Well, what happens when you don't feel like? What happens when you feel like doing drugs again? Oh, I'm just gonna quit drugs. How are you gonna do that? Well, I'm just gonna quit. What's your plan of action? So what we do is we work harder instead of smarter. Well, I'm gonna quit this, and we hit all kinds of road bumps, and we make it super duper hard on ourselves because all we do is we put all of our hopes and our dreams in a knapsack and hit the road. That's really naive. If you really want to overcome a drug addiction, there, there's certain you have to get a plan. You have to you have to take steps of action. You can't just I'm done. I mean, it it would be great if it worked like that, but it, it's not. It's a it's a habit. It's an addiction. It's something that you're going to have to break, and that takes time. It takes failure. It takes uh, you know struggling. It it takes time. Think of in the in the book of Genesis. There's this guy. Um, his his name is um, uh, Jacob. Uh, he was renamed Israel, and he's he's uh, he's fighting with the angel of the Lord all night. And then finally, it gets to be daylight, and the angel says, "You know, just just it, it, you need to let me go." And he says, "Not until you bless me." And uh, so, anyways, you, you, I'm I'm sure you see what I'm saying. But if not, it's not really worth spending too much time on. I'm kind of getting off topic. Let's get back to this. The idea of I'm going to get I'm going to, I'm going to stop doing this, but I don't have a clear I'm, I don't have a clear action. I, I, I'm going to do this, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fight for it. I'm just gonna plow through. Um, another another great example: uh, losing weight. I, I I'm I'm gonna lose weight. Okay, what's your plan? Oh, I don't have one. I just it's my for this year. I'm just gonna lose weight. Okay. So you're not going to get accountable to anybody. You're not going to exercise. You're not going to start eating healthier. You're not going to change your habits. But because you have a sudden urge to hop on a fad diet, somehow that's going to solve all your problems. What happens when that fad diet doesn't work how you want it to because everybody's body is unique? What happens when you hop on the Adkins and you hit a plank and just kind of plateau? And... So then you start doing things where, oh, this is my cheat day. Oh, this is my cheat day too. And so now you have all kinds of cheat days, and you have more cheat days than you have diet days. Work smarter, not harder. Don't say, I'm going to go uphill. And that's just what I'm going to do. It's like, well, is there a better way to do that? Is there a more efficient way? Is there a way that you might have more progress? See, something we don't understand is just because it's more challenging and more direct of a route doesn't mean it's has the best results doesn't mean it has the best results oh well how could it not have the best results I, I i'm doing the right thing yes but you've been doing the wrong thing for so long how are you possibly going to relearn this and then actually stick with it and then actually win it's just not possible and so okay here's another example so one more example we, i looked showed you the examples of, of of getting off of off of drugs uh the example of losing weight here's another example getting off of porn I'm just going to get out of porn because I decided in my mind, I'm going to stop looking at porn. I have no clear plan. I haven't been practicing. I haven't been delaying gratification. I, ha I, I have no helpers, no accountability. I have no progress chart. I have no idea how I'm going to get there, but I'm just going to wind up there someday on accident. Have you ever gotten into the car and just started driving and then... You got just mysteriously got to the place? No, you usually, especially if it's a road tri trip, you look at a map, or maybe you've been there before, and so you're, you're going a clear route to the end destination. There's not just like, hmm, hmm. And uh, so, the, you know, there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of things I could say about this, and a as you saw with the whole example of the whole Jacob-Israel thing, um, I'm really having to limit my... Uh, my examples because there's just so many different ways that this lesson applies in life. It applies to dealing with anxiety and depression, with work, with with your family, with I mean it just applies with, with like everything in life. This is one of those lessons that I've learned that are just been extremely valuable to me. And uh, and so I'm I'm really trying to limit my discussion on this. Ecclesiastes 10:10 10, 10 says this. 
I keep, if it seems like I'm distracted, it's because I keep thinking of new examples. And then I have to stop myself and I said, say, no, 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 just stick with the notes. Because here's the thing, you're going to have to apply these lessons to your own life in a way that, you know, you can. So if I give you examples all day, this this 15-minute video is going to be like a 30-minute video. Well, no, more like a two-hour video. So let's not do that. Ecclesiastes 10.10 is the verse of the day. It says this, if the iron is blunt and one does not sharpen the edge, he must use more strength. But wisdom helps one to succeed. And you might say, well, what the heck does that have to do with anything? So, okay, think of, a, think of an axe. You are, you are chopping a tree. You are chopping the wood. If you're using a blunt axe, it's going to be harder. You have to work harder. That's what he's talking about here. If the iron, if the blade is blunt, if it's dull, and one does not sharpen the edge, so we're just going to leave it blunt and use it, use it dull, he must use more strength. It's harder to do the same amount of work. In fact, you can do more work if you just take a little bit of time to sharpen the edge. So then he says this at, at the end of this, but wisdom helps one to succeed. See, wisdom says, my ax head is dull. I think I'll sharpen it. And then you sharpen it, and then you don't have to work so hard, so then you get more wood chopped. See, wisdom helps one to succeed. Well, you get halfway through the pile of wood with the dull axe, and you're like, "Man, I'm really, I'm really tired. I'm, 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 I'm kind of beat." Work smarter, not harder. And uh, this really just, a, man, it's just so many different examples that I have of this. Um, maybe I'll talk about the whole Jacob Israel thing later. Um, so what? So 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 what? What should you do? What? How? How can you? How can you take this and put it into action? Okay. First off, instead of just going through the motions and living, most people live in kind of this fugue, foggy state, okay? So instead of just going through the motions and living life, ask others for advice. Hey, uh, you know, do you have any ideas of how I should do this? Ask somebody who knows. You know, you, you've been leading this organization over here for a while. I'm kind of new to this, and maybe you aren't new to this. I've been doing this, and I just feel like maybe there's maybe I could find some better results. And yeah, some people are going to make fun of you. Oh, you've been doing it that way. That's good enough. You know, don't, we're not looking for what's good enough. We're looking to thrive, right? Um, so ask others for advice. Uh, study others who are doing things. Read their books. Watch how they operate. Maybe work underneath someone else. You great ideas here. Um, look at what you do to see if there are better ways of doing it. I'm doing this. Is there a better way to do that? Is there a more efficient way to do this? Am I just kind of wasting my time on this? Let's see. Well, you know, if I did this instead of that, if I did this at this time of day instead of at that time of day, I'll give you a great example of this. Uh, when I first came to the church where I am currently the associate pastor, uh, it was it was a mess. I mean, the, the services were so unorganized. First off, the service started at 10 and it didn't get over to like 1231. What were we doing in that amount of time? Well, about 30 minutes of it was announcements. 30 minutes of announcements. About 10 minutes of that was taking up offerings, so, so givings, uh, financial donations. 10 minutes. And then there was the opening greeting, and things were very disorganized. I went to a different church before this when I was a kid, and we had this thing where we would open and then there would be like some, they would sing some hymns and then they would stop singing hymns and go to announcements and then they would sing more songs. And I mean, it was just, nobody knew what, what was happening and there was no, no clear like line. It was like, we don't know why we're here, but it seems spiritual if we don't plan ahead if we just kind of run around and do things that seem spiritual, that must be spiritual. And I don't know why that's a thing, but like back back to this church, so what we did is we made it where it opens up with literally um, anything that needs to be announced, tops of one to two minutes. We don't time it or anything, it's just that um, you don't really need to say anything. Good morning, hope everybody's doing well. This is what's coming up. Um, let me just pray over the service real quick. That's it. And then, instead of taking out tithes and offerings, we have a, a giving box for if somebody wants to donate, it's there. 
They just drop it in, drop it in the box on their way in or on their way out. No hassle. They, we, we, you, none of that nonsense about guilt tripping people to give. I mean, just no. Or if they want to give online, they can at any time. And then we just go straight to the, straight to the worship, and then into the me- message. Our morning service starts at ten. It gets and people are the the building is already cleared and out by eleven thirty. That's phenomenal. Why is that important? Because we're not saying, hey, we just want to waste your time because it seems spiritual if we just waste time. Now, if we're having like a, a time of worship, like, okay, this this service, all we're doing is we're just going to be singing and praying. So we're going to go however long as it goes. If you get tired and you want to leave, there's the door. Have fun. We'll see you next time. It, it, that That's fine for a special occasion. But for the regular services... Where it's like, okay, well, we came here to learn about the Bible and to, and to sing songs and encourage each other. You know, okay, great. So let's do that. There's this idea that, like, if you don't have direction, somehow that's, that, that's better. And it goes back to the same big idea here, guys. Work smarter, not harder. We were doing a bunch of stuff, wearing, each other, wearing ourselves out on Sunday for no reason. It wasn't producing the results in other people and ourselves and anything. There was no results being produced. People weren't getting saved. People weren't getting encouraged. It was just taking up time. It, our goal was clearly, obviously, let's take up as much of somebody's Sunday morning as we possibly can. And that's what we were doing, just taking up time. So, okay, so, so we're looking at things that, we, things that we should do. You can see that I'm very passionate about this big idea. This is something that I've been really, really encouraged by when I've started my my struggle with pornography and stuff. Um, so look at what you do to see. Are there better ways that we can do this? Um, do, in fact, with churches, you can actually bring in consultants that walk in and they just say, okay, well, my first impression, having no previous encounter with your church, is this kind of seems a little bit messy and disorganized. I kind of got the feeling that I wasn't welcome. Uh, this sign kind of probably could have been cleaned off and, you know, just things like that. And it's like, oh, that was very helpful. Now we have a direction as to what can we do to improve. And there's nothing wrong with improving. I don't know why people make it where, as if you're a Christian, you have to be like afraid and opposed to growing and and maturing and doing better. Oh, well, we don't want to be people pleasers. What? (laughs) We're not talking about being people pleasers. We're talking about doing a job well. Like... When's the last time you went into a restaurant and the waiter's all like, oh yeah, your food's over there, go get it whenever you want. No, I don't care if you give me a tip. Like, (laughs) what? (laughs) It's not about... Anyways. So work smarter, not harder. Okay. Doing something for a long time isn't the same as doing it the right or best way. Sometimes we've been doing something for so long we think that that's the way we do it because that's the way we've always done it. But... That leaves much to much to be desired. First off, maybe you aren't doing it right, or maybe there's just a better way to do it. If you keep failing your goals, maybe the steps that you are setting for yourself are too big. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna quit porn. Then the next day you're looking at porn. Oh, I messed up again. Maybe you don't have a clear plan of action. Maybe the steps that you have to get to that plan to that goal, maybe they're just disproportionate. Have you ever gone up a staircase where the steps were just too tall or too narrow where stepping in was like this thick and you're trying to set your big foot on it? Like, uh. if, you, if you keep filling your goals, maybe the steps are, are you, that you're trying to take are just too big. Work out a clear plan of action. This is clearly where I'm going and this is how I'm going to get there. That starts with where you are and it ends with where you want to be. And what's in the middle? A bunch of very small, very manageable pieces. Very manageable steps. And this is how I'm going to get there. And then add room for failure. Don't 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 make yourself fail. Don't expect to fail, but when you do fail, let me let me say it differently. Don't psych yourself out. Don't see failure as what am I trying to say? You're, you're going to fail. There's going to be times when you mess up. But don't see the failures as the end of the journey. See the failures as a part of the journey. That's kind of what I'm trying to say. And schedule it in there. Where, don't be fatalist. Oh, I'm just doomed to fail and give up. I didn't say give up. But plan for it. Okay, so if, I'm, if, if this doesn't work out exactly how I have planned, what's my rebound? What am I going to do to pick myself back up? 
well, I'm not making any allowance for mistakes. Well, then you're a fool because what's going to happen is when you make a mistake, you're going to go to pieces. That's just not smart. So make sure that there's many manageable pieces and many manageable steps between the two. Here, here is where I am. Here's where I'm going. And make sure that you leave room for yourself to make mistakes and be human. Um, and if you mess up, here's the thing. Okay, if you mess up, or when you mess up, however you look, look at this, keep going. Don't start over again. Sometimes we think we have to start, start at the bottom of the stairs again. Nope. Keep going from where you are. Just keep going. Um, so I hope you understand what I'm talking about, about the whole the whole steps thing and making room for, for mistakes. There, basically, there's an extremist view that says, oh, I'm just going to mess up. In fact, we, we, I talked about this a, a couple of videos ago. Um, but then there's another thing that says, look, I'm not human. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to learn from it, and I'm going to try not to. And, you know, but if I should stumble, which seems how I'm human, that will probably happen. I'm going to get up and I'm going to try again. And I'm going to, I'm going to keep going. See, failures are only failures if you stop trying. A failure that results in you continuing to try, renewing your resolve, that's more of another step on that staircase. So I, I hope that you, that you kind of get what I'm saying. Big idea here, guys. Work smarter, not harder.